Greetings everyone. Got some more developments today. One of my viewers was uh, writing me a comment and uh, mentioning that my cell is wasting lots of voltage. And he's right. I originally didn't set it up to really harness any efficiency. I was just kind of looking for a, uh, a new power supply option. And uh, I found that in the capacitors. Capacitors are a lot easier to work with because um, you can mix and match them and you don't have as many losses. They're cheap and uh, they're just all around better. So what I'm going to show you today is a little bit of a development on a capacitive transformer. And before I was just using a single capacitor to feed into my rectifier here and that would feed into the cell but because I was using house current I was putting about 120 volts across my cell and this cell has only seven plates or six individual cells which divides the voltage by six now because I'm using baking soda as an electrolyte every cell re requires about four between four and five volts before it'll operate at its peak efficiency so 120 volts is way too much voltage because if you divide 120 by 6 that's about 20 so you'd have 20 volts per cell so you'd be throwing away at 2 amps you'd be throwing away about 40 watts of energy and I'm not exactly sure where that energy goes. It didn't really come out in the form of heat. It's just kind of like wasted somehow. Although it might not be wasted because of the, the capacitor actually adjusts for whatever the load is taking. Unlike an inductive transformer. Which would just, I believe, would just crank out whatever it's designed to do. And you'd just be pumping that energy into the cell but I don't know you can see I put a meter that's always a good thing to have so uh, you'll be able to see exactly what the heck I'm dealing with here and uh, let me explain how this little setup works the previous design you saw did not have this capacitor it was only this capacitor feeding the bridge rectifier and that in turn would feed the cell with power um, but that would put way too much voltage on the cell so what you do is you put a large capacitance in parallel with the power source that's how it appears on the surface it's just you're, you're just kind of storing up charge but actually what happens is these two capacitors uh, work in tandem and they lower the voltage to about in this case it's going to lower it to about 27 about yeah about 27 volts you have this capacitor in series with this capacitor and you take the you take the voltage off of the bigger capacitor this one's only 100 microfarads and this has to be a standard capacitor okay because the the polarity reversals here this one according to the pamphlet that I bought which explains all this this capacitor can be electrolytic as long as you use two electrolytic capacitors in series so in this diagram for simplicity I'm just representing it as one capacitor because essentially that's what you're dealing with but over here you can see there's a little bank of four capacitors to actually achieve that capacitance with electrolytics. And I know what a lot of you must be saying, oh, you're going to use electrolytic capacitors with alternating current? You must be crazy, right? Yeah, well, I don't know why, but you can do it. And they don't really heat up. Those caps are rated for 200 volts and these guys over here are 50 microfarads each these are run in parallel with each other 
just to form one big 100 microfarad cap and that's this whole bank is run in series with this bank and one of these lines comes off and goes to one side of the bridge and another line comes off of this spot right here which is basically just tied into the mains and that's about it and it outputs about 2 amps at 27 volts which I'll show you in a second now if you install electrolytics as your secondary capacitor right make sure you tie the same polarities together so I know you see four here because I'm using 330 microfarad caps uh, two banks of two so this little bank right here that's 660 microfarads and this bank here is 660 microfarads this is in parallel with each other this is in parallel with each other and each one of these banks is wired in series so when you have 660 with the uh, capacitive formula for a series capacitance it works out to 330 microfarads with two 660 microfarad capacitor banks so just you know keep that in mind and you see the two negatives are connected here and the two positives are connected there the same thing with this bank but you see I have the negatives of these two connected to the negatives of these two so on either side of this cat bank is a positive terminal why it doesn't explode when I connect it to alternating current I have no idea I have no idea and that's explained in the the pamphlet that I bought from Eagle Research and uh, they go into more detail as to why this works and I'll tell you it goes a little bit over my head so I can't really explain exactly how it works but it works so let me just turn it on you can see the gas just rushing off of there pretty good